Welcome to Backyard Philosophy, a podcast where a couple friends grab some cold ones, sit around the fire, and talk about science, philosophy, and history. Crack one open, sit back, and get a good laugh as we discuss everything from automation to why the meaning of life is 42. It is the night before Easter. The clock slowly ticks deeper into the night. Posing forces, each on different hilltops looking at each other. Both sides armed and prepped with rockets galore, waiting to fill the night sky with fire. No, this isn't a historical battle, and no, it's not a modern war. This, my friend, is Rupa Dupa Plamos. Nick, do you know Rupa Dupa Plamos? I think you're high as shit right now. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well... Ruka Tuba Plamos is a festival, and this is now most definitely on my bucket list. You might think I'm high, but this once you hear this, this will be on your bucket list. And not only is this maybe my one of my new favorite festivals I've ever heard of, of Ruka Tuba Plamos, which literally translate to the Rocket War in Greek. How awesome is that name, Rocket War? It is a festival held yearly on the island of Chios in Greece between two rival churches the Argos Marcos, and the Pangina Urtherinia. And each night before Easter, these two Christian churches launch anywhere from 50,000 to 600,000 homemade rockets at each other's churches. They actually light up the entire night sky on this island. And these are not your roadside bottle rockets either. These, these people shoot some big boys. All of these fireworks, when they are launching, they make it look, though, as the night's been filled by sparkler confetti. When seeing images of this, because I don't know how I stumbled across this, but I'm so happy I did. It reminds me of a war zone with rockets flying both directions, but luckily without any evil that actually comes from war. So, Nick, do I have your attention? I mean, you have my attention and every American's attention. I mean, we are the only country whose national anthem mentions rockets. Their firework festival might outcompete fourth of july but it gets better these two churches these two sides facing on the hilltop aren't just launching rockets at each other for the hell of it they're doing it to try to win they've made this into a game each church each on different hills maybe 400 so meters away that's 1600 plus feet away from each other on this greek island small greek island and the goal for each side is to hit the opponent's church's bell in the bell tower with his, with fireworks as many times as possible. All year round, residents of Chios fill their firework armory, trying to perfect the homemade rocket science. Days to months in advance, each side begins to fortify their churches by putting on sheet metal on wood parts, windows to protect it, put on metal fencing and, and uh, netting to protect the launchers and the people actually shooting off and supplying fireworks. And the day of, they are hundreds of pickup trucks bringing rockets to each respected side. They even line up tracks all along the wall from the church to face their opponents so they can launch and set up hundreds, if not thousands, of fireworks at a time. And I do mean hundreds or thousands of rockets at a time. People with flares run down a line, lighting row after row of fireworks, and they send up a bomb ring. A rain upon their opponent trying to hit that opposing church bell. It is, it looks like Valhalla and I love. For hours in this beautiful chaos, this chaos just continues to ensue. But even as chaotic as this seems, this chaos is not without rules. At midnight, each side does a ceasefire for midnight mass for the people who wish to worship in said churches. But after mass is over, a horn echoes in the distance and they restart the fire. And the chaos, the rain of rockets, begins all over again. All throughout the night, these two churches light up the sky, trying to keep track of how many times they've hit each other's bell. And at the end of it, each side usually announces themselves as the winner, for its name possible to keep track of how many times a bell has been hit, or even hear the bell getting hit with literally thousands upon thousands of fireworks going off in the air and blowing up. Love it. So each year, they announce themselves as winners, and they... As a result of the disagreement of who won, they all agree to have a rematch the following year. Same place, same time. You betcha. Bring your best rockets. 
will bring ours. Now you may ask, how did this Rocket War Festival began? When did it actually start and how did it start? It's actually been kind of lost in time. Due to lack of de uh, documentation or simply no one wanted to keep track of how it started, but it has been said to have started during the Ottoman Empire when chaos was underneath Ottoman rule. And some people have some theories on how it started. Some say firing on each other's churches began simply to scare off an invasion from the Ottoman Empire. Or since the Ottoman Empire at this time was Muslim and the island is predominantly Christian, they were launching fireworks at each other to hide the sounds of people at worshiping from their controllers and their captives. So to celebrate on their island in East, on Easter in peace, they decided to shoot each other with explosives. I love this. Fun fact, until 1889, the people of Kios used actual real cannons, not fireworks, to do this tradition. And the reason they stopped using cannons wasn't of their own accord, but simply the Ottomans were like, no, 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 no more, and confiscated all their cannons. But the Greek people, being clever and determined, found a workaround, and they began making their own rockets to launch at each other instead. Boy... If I could time travel, I would love to go back and see them actually use cannons to try to shoot each other's bells in their bell towers. Can you imagine being the Ottomans? You conquer these people and they're like, hey, low key, we're just going to shoot each other with cannons. No big deal. <laughs> and then some Ottoman administrator is like, what? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Not to belittle, to belittle them, but it feels like. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. You, you, got, you, you guys can't play with these toys anymore. You keep hurting yourselves with it. Oh, but to answer your question, how is this legal? Well, hang on. You may ask, is this dangerous? How is this legal? What about the mess? And to answer all your questions, it's yes. Yes, it is. It is dangerous. Sometimes rockets go off course and fly towards residential and public areas. Buildings get damaged and sometimes set on fire. Minor injuries and burns are quite common each festival. Occasional f fire gets started where it's not supposed to get started. Sometimes fireworks blow off hands or detonate prematurely and not according to plan. And of the 125 plus years of using rockets, there's only been seven recorded deaths. And luckily, local fire departments and ambulances are close by and sort of supervise this festival. Because Nick, this festival gets better. So to answer your question, how is this legal? Well, it's not. Well, yeah, it's it's technically illegal. Well, yeah, no, not technically. It's just actually illegal. But this tradition is so ingrained with the island and their way of life that the police just let it happen. No harm, no foul, which I don't blame the police for doing. I would do the same thing. And the police will occasionally raid a building or abandoned warehouse that is dedicated to making or storing these homemade rockets. And when I mean they need warehouses and abandoned buildings to store these warehouses. I do mean that. As soon as it, the festival is over, residents a year round make fire, like it, they're like they're going to war. They make thousands, up to 600,000 fireworks. But for the most part, this is pretty much just an ancient tradition and not to mention a huge amount of revenue for the, this produced for the small island with tourists and sales and majority of the residents are okay with it. Although in recent history, I believe it was 2016, could have been 2014, they canceled it for one year due to lawsuits by residents. But don't worry. The festival the next year was back, and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Now, about the mess. After a night of tens of thousands of homemade rockets being launched, as you can imagine, Nick, things get a bit messy. Some scorch marks, some ashes, and all the sticks that were attached to the fireworks are kind of everywhere. But the burnout rockets that cover the ground and it looks like they do fully cover the ground quickly gets cut cleaned up and the town quickly returns to its old ways of peace and quiet i must say i highly encourage people to look up a video of rock and Topolis. i'm probably pronouncing that wrong my greek is not the best but the sound of fluttering rockets followed by a constant bang of them popping filling the night and echoing for miles the black sky turns red like an artificial sunrise from the sideways rain of people launching their mad scientist creations. The smell of gunpowder and smoke rise and flow out through the town, cheering and laughing from both sides as fireworks burst and illuminate their opponents and the night sky. The sound of happiness when they hit their opposing bell. And to me, having each side on a different hill just makes it that much more beautiful because you can see 
the arch. It's almost like it's almost like a stage when you're looking at it. The two hills facing each other. I keep entering these because it's like it flies over the town, like like almost like, a, like it's straight out of a movie, pretty much to me. And like connecting a hangar of streamers and a party, they do it with fireworks across a valley. And although this tradition is not without danger, I still want to go to it and if possible even participate in the festival. This Rocket War Festival has produced thousands for, probably tens of thousands for their small island. And it shows a direct determinants and it shows the ability to adapt to a hard situation. And I love it. Gunpowder, rockets, and history. Sign me up. Nick, are you down? I remember firework fights at home and in college <laughs> and last week <laughs> and uh <laughs> and at work um nope i i'm amazed and slightly pissed off that the most american festival i've ever heard of doesn't even take place in north america oh nick i i want you to look up a picture of these or videos of this this sound alone like i want i i don't think i did this justice of when they line up tracks the tracks are down an entire wall like you know how you prop up a bottle rocket you put in a bottle they do it the same thing with their homemade fireworks and these are a lot bigger and they go all the way down it has to be it has to be 20 meters in length so like 60 feet uh, each row like 60 feet just a man wearing wearing a bandana with them just running down with a flare lighting all of them all at once and just shoo, dozens and dozens and thousands fill the air going back and forth my favorite is i saw a video of two rockets colliding in the air because both sides are firing constantly throughout the night it starts from about 8 p.m they take a break around midnight for mass and then they continue until dawn it's it's nearly it's nearly like 12 hours of constant firework bombardment and when the rockets hit each other in midair and they blow up it's oh it's so beautiful this is so beautiful. Imagine all the shitty cell phone videos of those fireworks. Oh, that, you know what I really want to see? I would really love, actually, I might do this if I ever somehow make it to this small Greek island. I want to do a time-lapse video. You know how people do with stars, slow motion? Because imagine seeing all the lights that the firework streamers create at one single moment in a picture. I That's got to be one of the best exposure pictures out there. I feel like that'd be almost too much, but like looking at the sun. <laughs> i mean i i wasn't kidding with artificial sun that is i i just love how it's a whole community thing like as soon as the festival ends within like two days cities cleaned up and they're back to making fireworks and it's i don't know why it's so comedic to me of both sides both sides saying i won no i won okay same time next year yeah okay <laughs> like it's i just love it i just love everything about this story as a firework kid and adult i adore fireworks i adore explosions nick i know from your experience that you also adore explosions and fire the only reason i'm not in jail is because i get a paycheck to do what i do yes yeah i mean imagine i imagine volunteering to do this this would be oh and it's it is so cool because sometimes like most of the fireworks don't have an explosion pop they're just kind of going for distance they're more like rockets than they are fireworks so sometimes when they land in the church steeple up by the bell and it you can see that red glow bounce off the brass or whatever the church bell is made out of it illuminates it so well and then seeing where all these fireworks go everywhere just leaving a little fire trace like a like a much like a burn like burning a dry pile of leaves you just kind of see it go everywhere and i Unfortunately, well, I don't know if this is unfortunate to me. To me, I find it funny. Sometimes these rockets aren't the straightest shooters. Rockets have been known to skim off each other in midair or be launched at a weird angle and not go towards their intended target, hence where the fire department and ambulances come in. Everything about this, it just reminds me of the uh, the rocket's red glare, bombs bursting in air, like it's just it's so american like it's just i have i just have vivid memories of going to indiana to buy fireworks like and now i just imagine shooting them at my friend's house like that is but this is that on a thousand fold scale <laughs> and that's them being nicer because they got the cannons taken away from them 
<laughs> like, like that was them stepping it down. Was can was from cannons to rockets. Man, classic Ottomans ruining everything. Really. <laughs> I always love because I was watching a interview of one of the Greek uh, participants, and he goes, "Yeah, it's we as long as everyone keeps it safe, it's good. There's no injuries. It's stuff like that, and that's how it is majority of the time. Occasionally, though, because they have almost like these runners where they're bringing more fireworks out the out the back to the front lines. Occasionally, a stray firework will find a big pile of fireworks, and." <laughs> Woo! Woo! That's like hitting a hornet's nest that are all on fire. That is crazy to watch. But uh, they, for doing it as long as they've been doing it, they are quite professional. They are good at what they do. It looks chaotic, but it's only seven deaths out of 126 years of shooting off fireworks. Hell, in America, I can't imagine how many people die just lighting off fireworks in their backyard. And not to, lend, and not to mention... They're experimenting. They're trying to get the best rocket they can so their church can win. And when you have 50,000 to 600,000 of those motherfuckers flying towards you, it's because the people are launching are in front of the church They're getting, that's getting shot at. They just put netting above them so everything falls and some homemade kind of walls. Like it is them enforcing and them attacking. It's war without death. And everyone gets laughs and drinks at the end of it. I mean, that's that's like the best case scenario, right? That is the best case scenario. And Nick, since you have quite a familiarity with fire and firefighting, would you like to, if you were in Greek, would you volunteer to be a volunteer firefighter to watch this spectacle? Oh, I would love to sit there and watch this go down. <laughs> I would. I would be out there. We'd have the thermal imaging camera going. Oh, I never even thought about the thermal image. Oh my God, that. Oh, talk about the smell of gunpowder in the morning, but man, the thermal image in the evening, that's got to be fantastic. But Nick, once the world someone gets back to normal, there are nearby hotels and they do have great seating to watch this festival. And occasionally they will let outsiders come do this amazing tradition with them. And buddy, sounds like we need to get some plane tickets to Greece. This is a much more appealing trip to me than getting bit by a bullet ant. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew exactly what you were going to say when you brought that up. Oh, uh, let's do both. Let's do both. Let's, yeah. let's do one. <laughs> let's do the fun one. Uh, now you know a little bit about Rukatua Polmis, a ancient Greek, well, a old Greek tradition on the island of Chios between two rival churches, Diego's Marcos and the Bangina Ethereini. And for all those listening, actually, before I close out, Nick, do you have a... Uh, any more questions? Yeah, how the fuck do you pronounce all of that and you can't say compatibilist? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My brain's so broken. Maybe because I grew up reading ancient Greek and I have a uh, generational pharmacist in my family so they spoke a lot of latin names for medicine around me oh fuck whatever <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so broke nick i'm so broke but as i said the rockham to play miss literally translate to rocket war and i can't i can't implore you all enough to go online and look at videos and images of this it is stunning beautiful or check out our sources that are in the description of our youtube channel backyard philosophy and I hope, I hope you enjoyed this amazing, amazing festival as much as I have. And as always, Nick and all the audience, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Facebook.